Well, first, I think the way to answer the, the first question is to observe that our defense industrial base in general, across the board, not just the raw materials, but also the manufacturing capacity and all the rest of this is inadequate. I think that is one of the big lessons of this war is that it is conceivable that you can have wars in which lots of munitions are used, unlike uh, the wars that we have seen uh, in recent decades, where we used a lot of stuff, but nothing that couldn't be replenished uh, fairly expeditiously. And that is something that the Department of Defense and Congress and, uh, again, those in industry are looking at very hard. And there's the beginning of the kinds of authorizations and appropriations that are needed to rectify that. And again, then the raw materials component of that will be important as well, just as we are having to relook uh, the sources of raw materials for a variety of other industries, including a lot of those that have to do with electric vehicles and uh, batteries and so forth. Um, when it comes to the human judgment uh, issue, again, the paradox here is that I don't think, despite all of what we say about, yes, there will be the human in the loop, we must say that there's an ethical just conviction about that. But at the end of the day, at some point, I think the human in the loop will be the human that actually helps develop the algorithm that establishes the conditions that must be met by the machine, which, by the way, can actually do better in assessing a number of these conditions, whether they're present or not, uh, with facial recognition, gait recognition, a whole bunch of ways of validating uh, conditions that, again, they do better and much more rapidly than we do. But if the human in the loop is is there right up to the final decision, literally to pull the trigger, your machine may lose because the other side's machine may not have that person in the loop at the last minute. This is a real paradox.